Ladies and gentlemen, we are back at Gladiators of the Cage, the Road to Glory 7 here in beautiful Northfield Park, Ohio at the Hard Rock Casino. I'm Grant Berger, and with me is Charlie Smith. Say hello, Charlie. Hello. <laughs> we just finished our last fight, David Shim versus Jarvis, uh, and it was a very, very good fight. I would say that that was a beautiful knockout. Was that, that was the first knockout that we had tonight. Um, coming up next, Alan Huffman and Cody Heyer. What do you have to say? I, I'm ready for this fight also. Another training guy out of Pittsburgh. This is our second official match, Pittsburgh versus Ohio. Pittsburgh's looking to go 2-0. I tell you what, let's take a look at the tail of tape. We've got Cody Heyer, 26 years of age, 5 feet 6 inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds. He's got a 500 record of 1-1, one and one, fighting Alan Huffman, 25 years of age, 5 feet 8 inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds, with an amateur record of 2 wins with 3 losses. Now, I got to say, I'm actually very excited about this Cody Heyer fight. Uh, we have a, a person who recently fought Cody Heyer in, earlier on in the event with Dion Goodlow. Uh, Heyer is a really high-level wrestler. Very high-level wrestler. You know, it kind of gets overlooked because he has such a depth in his Brazilian jiu-jitsu, but he wrestled with Division I champions, Olympic-level wrestlers, and he actually came out this way because he said, I want to better my game at Pitts and, and go to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's Absolutely. actually becoming a city known for the quality of MMA the fighters that they're putting out. 100%. <laughs> Here we go. Round one begins with referee Forrest Petz giving us the clap. Alan Huffman versus Cody Heyer. Huffman taking center cage right off the bat. Yeah, feeling out process begins. Huffman wastes no time. Now we all know it's not, it's not a big secret right now what Cody Heyer wants to do. It appears he wants to wrestle. He wants to get him down and he wants to beat him up. Could it be that Heyer wants him in the center of the cage for that takedown? Well, absolutely, but Huffman's doing a really good job changing levels and working that jab. He wants to keep him at bay. He wants Heyer to come and shoot from a far distance, and that's exactly what he's doing. And Heyer's looking to slip under that and close the distance. So there's a lot of strategy going on here. Absolutely. Beautiful lead uppercut coming off of Huffman. His left hand is very active, and it's, he's doing a very good job of keeping Heyer away. Nice. Huffman's got to just stay like he's doing in circling. He's now trying to stand in front, just change levels and circle. I think it's the game plan he's looking to implement. Huffman circling and circling and eating a nice jab. So it looks like Hire's finally trying to get his rhythm and he's starting to get his distancing. Now I have to say, I've noticed that Alan Huffman is throwing about four or five straight left hands to the belly. I would not be surprised if he was looking to set up a big bomb of a right hand off of that. Yeah, and it, really no one's utiliz utilizing the leg kicks yet. Nice, good slip. Both fighters ducking under some punches there. Cody Heyer good looking job. patient, good looking job. like he's circling in. He's closing the distance. He's moving forward. Good job by Huffman, though, to change levels and throw that body shot just to keep him guessing. Absolutely. He's, he's really doing a great job hitting the body. He's landing almost all of those that he throws. And there comes the straight one, too. Yeah, that's what I've been waiting for. Oh, good shot. Good exchange by Heyer. He's looking, it seems like he's trying to pick that one shot and then follow up with it. I have to say, early on in this first round, I'm being pretty impressed by Alan Huffman. He's got some very stiff punches. Yeah, I'd like to see him follow it up with a one, two, three. There you go, there's the one, two. Great job by Hyatt getting away from it. Another uh, exchange. Huffman with a two inch height and reach advantage over higher. Not much of a thing here, though, I would say. Huffman can't get out of his game plan. He started off this fight by really kind of controlling the pace, and he doesn't want to start chasing Hire. That's what Hire's waiting for, so he can change levels and get that takedown, Grant. Absolutely. There's the first leg kick that we saw of the fight. 
Huffman appears to have a bit of blood trickling out of his nose, but much ado about nothing in my opinion. Really surprised that Hire hasn't even went for that big takedown. But it looks like he's really relaxed and looking for that one perfect shot. Hire looking content to stand and trade. 10 seconds left, another good leg, caught the leg kick. Now he's going to drive back. Can he get the takedown? He could possibly steal the round away with this takedown. Good job by Huffman with underhooks and the round ends. Uneventful first round is in the books between Alan Huffman and Cody Heyer. No doubt they were both looking to get their game plan and their rhythm going. You know, I'd have to say, it looked like both fighters were just in the middle of a feeling out process. They both know what they're coming to the table with. They're both ready for each other's moves. And I also want to point out once more, Mike Wilkins in the Stout Training Center team are facing their opponent away from, or their fighter away from the opponent in the cage. Yeah, you know what, that's a great strategy because in amateur MMA, you're only allowed to have one guy in the cage with you. So what they're doing is turning the stool around so the second coach can talk to him also. So now you hear both people and you can focus on your guy. Smart move, and it's something that I think more fighters should do. Real men of genius, Charlie, real men of genius. Mike Wilkins giving some advice to his fighter. Remember how the last fight went, though, you know, with another stout trained fighter. It went to that third round, and that's where that third round, the domination started coming over. And some would maybe say he stole that fight because of that third round, winning that split decision. So it seems they don't get rattled in these situations, Grant, that they just persevere and keep pushing through. You know, for these kind of guys, you get a guy who's at a high, high enough level of fighting, and he's done this for long enough, it's just another day in the office. It and really I is. think that may be what they're trying to attain over at Stout Training Center. Very impressive. All the way around. Round two is beginning with Alan Huffman versus Cody Heyer. Huffman closing the distance fast again, wanting to reestablish that rhythm and that pace, keep Heyer backing up. You Use know, Heyer, Heyer has not has been fairly inactive. Here he got a double underhook, so he's going for a clinch. This is dangerous for Huffman. He really needs to circle off. He can't stay engaged and just let his back up against that fence. I know it's easier said than done, but he's got to get that underhook in and try to spin higher up against the cage himself and then just go back to his game plan. I have to say, it appears that Cody Heyer isn't just looking for a takedown. He's looking for a big takedown. Yeah, I think if he gets that, that right hand under the leg of, of Huffman, he's going to go way up in the air. Beautiful shot to the body while trying to set that move up by Heyer. Huffman's got to circle off there. Seems like that takedown's going to be inevitable, but Huffman's doing a great job. Knee to the groin by Hire. It did not appear intentional. Oh. Huffman's just shaking it off. He's saying, let's go. You usually have five minutes, but Huffman's saying, you know what? It wasn't that bad. Let's keep fighting. I don't want to lose the rhythm. I think he's just happy he got off the fence. Honestly, in <laughs> some way, that might have been a blessing in disguise for Huffman, because now he can try to implement. Nice one, two, three. That's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see more of the combinations, and Huffman's now breaking that out. It's only going to be a matter of Huffman getting into the rhythm and starting to throw those two and three punch combos. <laughs> Both guys are loading up. They're waiting for that one big shot, but they're really trying to be methodical about setting it up. Now, I have to point out, if this is going to be Cody Heyer's game plan, is to wait until the later rounds and then go for that takedown and go for, for whatever he wants to do, he had better be pretty confident that he can get a finish. Well, that's just it. You know, I, if I'm a judge once again, which I'm glad I'm not, it's going to be tough not to give Huffman that first round. He seems to be dominating the presence of the cage. Hire just seems really tent on waiting to just sit back and throw something like that. That's what we need to see more by Hire. Absolutely. In, in the absence of all other actions, you have to just take a look at the fight and say, Alan Huffman has been in the center of the cage, controlling the movement, controlling the postures of the fight. I mean, that, that's worth something, in my opinion. Yeah, it's good to be really relaxed, but you can't be too content. A nice push. I'd like to see Hire push that up against the cage when he backs him up. That's the one move he needs to do is just keep moving forward. Huffman may win this round just because he keeps moving forward, even though he isn't maybe landing that significant of shots. Head movement started to, to become a little bit more prevalent in Huffman. Could that mean a couple of flurries? And a big double leg by Hire. Good job of Huffman fighting really hard. There's the takedown we've been waiting for by Hire. Huffman needs to be careful of grabbing that fence. We're going to see Huffman's abilities on the ground now with the ground and pound all legal here in Ohio. I would say Alan Huffman's doing a really good job of holding on to Cody Heyer right now, especially with 10 seconds left in the round. And that's a big takedown at the end of the round. 
So how are the judges going to see that? Good job by both fighters. Could the takedown have solidified the round for Cody Hire right now? You know what? It, it very well possibly could have because that was a powerful takedown, and he did something with it. He got a few punches in there. Um, Huffman didn't just jump back up to his feet. Absolutely. Like I said, in the absence of action, you have to look at what's happened already, and there wasn't a whole lot of exchanges going on there in the second round. Hire did get the takedown, and he was attempting a lot of takedowns. I'm def yeah, definitely so. If I'm the guy's corners right now, I'm telling him, this is your round. This fight could go either way. That could easily be split 50-50. You know, I'm saying go for it. Let's implement our game plan. You, someone may have to take a risk here to get the reward at the end. What do you think, Grant? I would say that that's going to be a really, really, uh, uh, something that's going to probably have to happen. I can't imagine either of these guys fighting it out to a decision and letting it go down that way. Alan Huffman obviously has got some power on the end of those stiff punches. He should be utilizing good straight punching techniques and counter punching to get around Cody Heyer. Heyer's game plan, without a doubt, is going to be to get the takedown, get the ground and pound finish, get the choke, do whatever he needs to do. Huffman's been doing a good job keeping him at bay, using those long-range punches, the jab, to keep Hire from way back. So his shot would have to come from way out. But I think Hire is such a high level of wrestler that he can get this takedown if he just drives through and bullies through. And if I'm his corner, that's what I'm telling him here. Absolutely. Both fighters approaching for round three between Alan Huffman and Cody Hire at Gladiators of the Cage, the road to glory seven. Pittsburgh looking to go up. Two to nothing in this grudge series. Alan Huffman not wanting that to happen. He's going to try to even up the score. Huffman again in center cage. Nice leg kick. I would have liked to see a little more of those in the first couple rounds. Now, both fighters we talk about their corners. Oh, wow. he gets rocked by a big left hand. Hires going to finish. Nice head movement by Huffman. Huffman's got a tough face. Now that's allowed Huffman to throw a couple punches back. This is what I think everyone's been wanting to see. They're letting their hands finally go. Both seem content on just throwing leather at this point, feeling wow. each other out. Huffman took a big shot there a second ago, and I can't believe he immediately recovered, especially nice. after Hire fed him a second. Seems like Huffman's just stalking him now, waiting to close that distance. Huffman. Nice slip under the punch there. Oh, Huffman eats another solid left. I think it just looks to be, Charlie, like Huffman needs to be about six inches closer to his opponent. I, I, I totally agree. Landing. And that's the respect he's given higher for his wrestling ability. He doesn't want to get that close because he knows the takedown ability. He's already felt it in the second round. Absolutely. I, it would be highly suggested that Hire goes in for a really nice takedown early on in this round, and, and he can hopefully get some work done. Nice stiff jab, though, by Huffman. He keeps putting that pressure on. He's got to get under and around that left jab of Huffman to get that takedown. Hire circling, making Huffman attack him. This may give him the shot to do exactly that, get under a good body lock. Nice job by Huffman trying to control and put Hire back up against the cage. And I have to point out, Huffman did just sprawl on Cody Hire, the Division I wrestler. Huffman, as far as I know, has no wrestling credentials. What could that mean? Aside from Huffman getting taken down just now. <laughs> it is so hard to stop a guy like Hire when he pushes you up against that fence. Huffman's got to work and get his back square up against the cage and allow himself to wall walk, as we call it, and cage walk, and get himself back to his feet. He does not want the round to finish this way. Hire doing a good job getting his right leg passed on Huffman's left side. That kind of stalemates the submissions of Huffman. So now Huffman has to pop up on his hips, post that left hand up, and stand up. There he goes. There he goes. Now he switched over his right hip, so that means he's going to push his right hip up. It's for Huffman to put his left hand on the mat and post himself up off this. Good job of fighting from the bottom. He's not just allowing Hire to just ride him and throw punches. He's keeping busy. So it's interesting. How are the judges going to see that, Grant? I, I have to say that it's going to have to look a little bit better in Huffman's favor, in my opinion. Huffman obviously took the first round. He's being active off of his back, whereas Cody Hire is not really throwing a whole lot of shots. And I think that's what won his training partner Sestock's fight. I think that's what him, won him that fight. It's just staying busy on the bottom. Now Hire's finally throwing those punches. Cody Hire content to lay in the guard of Alan Huffman. And that is it, folks. Alan Huffman versus Cody Hire is going to go to the judges. Great show of respect, man. What sportsman here? You know, it's funny. You look at the expressions on these guys' faces, <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, my job's over today. You know, what? how calm and how composed. I mean, they really are, really are dedicated athletes.
without a doubt. Alan Huffman looking very tough in his, in his uh, fifth fight here. I believe it's his first fight with Gladiators of the Cage. A little bit of blood on his nose, but none the worse for wear. Yeah, I'll tell you, this is another tough one for the judges. I mean, how do you point, how do you, who do you give points to and for what on that? And the judges are going to look at this closely. I think there'll be a couple minutes here for a judge's decision because they're going to tally up those points and take into consideration everything. Yes. Absolutely, I couldn't agree with you more. I, this is going to be a tough, tough fight to judge, just like the last ones. Here's one of the best shots tonight, that nice left hand, which he's been trying to set up all night. Huffman walked right in. That's why you never circle into the power of your opponent. Soon as he did it, Hire capitalized and threw that big right hand. And look how quickly he closes the distance on Huffman. Oh, and if Cody Hire would have just had a bit more wind up or a bit more, a, a little bit better timing on that secondary punch, that could have been the one that would have put him out. Yeah, no doubt. Huffman's definitely composed. He regathered himself, and I love the fact that he started gunslinging back. Good head movement. He didn't just stand up against the cage. He moved his head and ducked those punches. Real maturity shown tonight by Alan Huffman in the cage. We're ready now and for the decision. And now to our ring announcer, Dan Bogan. <laughs> Well, there you have it, folks. We were just saying it's going to be a very difficult decision for the judges, and I'm not so sure how everybody feels about that decision, but it is what it is. Cody Heyer takes the win. You know what? That's a close one. Once again, we're sitting up here. We see things, and the judges see something else sometimes. But I don't know. I'm not uncomfortable with that decision. Uh, you know, it seems like both guys really tried to implement their game plan. I think it was those takedowns by Heyer that really just made the finish. I would say it would be the takedowns by Heyer, and I would say that Alan Huffman may have had a better game as far as the stiff punches and keeping him at distance, but Heyer did land that gigantic right hand. He landed two gigantic right hands. That could have pulled at the W. I, I think that's really probably what pushed it over the edge. The takedowns really helped the cage domination, but those big shots, when you knock a guy down and you rock a guy, it sends a message to the judges, and I think that's what happened. It does, and not only did he knock him down, he knocked him down and he followed on and tried to get the finish. And exactly. that's commendable in and of itself. Now a word from our sponsors. 